This is InfoSec Decoded over the pandemic. And we're starting with Irvin, who has got uh, a victory from the EFF. Yes, the EFF is happy today or yesterday. Um, actually, a while ago. Uh, Google has released a disabled 2G feature. Uh, this allows all Google's Google phones to uh, have less of a chance to get hit by a stingray. Uh, so you can choose to keep that on or off. Uh, keeping it off will ensure that your phone uses 3G and up, which is better anyway. Uh, Apple has not released that yet. So Apple phones can still get hit by a stingray in like a downgrade attack. But hey, hats off to Google to making Android do that. Now let's see how long it takes to get everywhere to all other Android devices, but I'm sure this will hit first the Pixels and maybe Samsung. Yeah, and it's only if you get the latest version of Android, I suppose, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, but still, it's progress. Although I'm sure, you know, it doesn't really matter for 90% of users who won't turn it off, but anyway. Right. I wonder where you would go that you really need the 2G. Probably nowhere in America, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't know. There are places where the signal isn't as strong and it's just easier to downgrade. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've ever downgraded voluntarily all the way to 2G, but yeah, I've, I've turned off uh, 5G and 4G to get a better signal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, it shows some progress. <clears throat> all right. And Alan has got our evil. Uh-oh, are you there, Alan? Not hearing anything. Now I see the little symbol moving, but there is no sound. Alan's voice is still traveling through the internet. Apparently so. Oh, the packets haven't arrived yet. I don't know. He was, uh, oh, he's gone. All right, well, Alan will probably reappear. It was working just a few seconds ago. In the meantime, I'll go to one of mine. So dimming the sun's rays, <clears throat> this is a big one, right? We have so much carbon dioxide in the air and everybody's still burning coal and stuff. So it's going to keep getting worse. And we already have so much global warming. It's causing huge problems. <laughs> so people want to do geoengineering of earth to cool off the earth. And one of the big plans is to spray particles up in the atmosphere. And this one is really popular because we already know it works because when big volcanoes go off, they cause the earth to darken for perhaps years at a time. So if you just put junk up in the upper atmosphere, that will reflect the sun's rays away and cool the earth. And a lot of people want to do that. Putting sulfur particles up in the air would do it. But now a consortium of scientists have claimed that we must absolutely never do that. We must have an international agreement to never do that because it will make the climate worse in parts of the earth and better on others. And I'm sure that's true of all these geoengineering features. So we should be having this discussion. I think uh, it's not simple and it's going to turn out to the usual kind of uh, brutal injustice of almost all international policy. Um, everything you do helps one group, but it hurts some other group. And uh, so anyway, but I think we really are going to need to do this. And of course, one of the arguments they make is that by even bringing up the geoengineering possibility, you tell people they don't really need to cut their carbon emissions. And of course, we need to do both as much as we can. But I think we've already passed the point where we can possibly not do geoengineering. And also, I think the political reality of the international situation is that we are not going to stop using carbon anytime soon. Most people are talking about hitting carbon zero in you know, like 2050 or something. So we're really going to need to employ geoengineering also to cut back the carbon and uh, it will, of course, have uh, people that are hurt more by that. I don't see any option. Doing nothing is not a good option either. Anyway, uh, Alan, is your voice working? Nope, I hear nothing. Now you had it good a minute ago. All right, well. All that new fancy, that's, it's that Hannah Montana Linux that he's using. It must be, yeah, yeah. I mean, he uses Linux, and so, of course, nothing ever works very well, but, you know, we can pick on him in impunity now that his voice doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, so this other one was pretty amazing to me. Um, the Big Bang has been the story for most of my lifetime. The idea that the universe came 
from this singularity that's exploded and created the world and then it's going to thin out and die in a heat death and there's a new quantum calculation that suggests that that is not true at all the big bang has always been kind of bogus um the singularity is kind of a weird mathematical point where the physical laws stop working and our rules don't really apply and so you can't really project what's happening in there and what he says is if you actually use proper quantum gravity which is a developing field that's not settled yet but if they use the best current system of quantum gravity they predict that in fact what's going on is the universe is static just like einstein said in the first place which i must say has enormous appeal there's a fundamental principle of cosmology and physics where you say you know let's assume that we are not special that our planet is not special our human race is not special our particular moment in time is not special the most reasonable thing to assume is that the whole world is pretty much the same and if your theory requires that there's something magical and special about us that's a strike against it and they say here uh this way einstein would be right the universe is static there never was this big bang it doesn't really expand it's uh, if you use better calculations um I mean, there is some expansion. I'm not quite sure how that works, but they say it is static and unchanging. That was Einstein's assumption from the start. And so that's very appealing on a philosophical level, but we certainly need to learn more as this theory advances. Anyway, uh, Urban, you've got uh, an API leak. <clears throat> uh, yes, Safari apparently has uh, an index DB can be used to leak out all kinds of wonderful information. What's index DB? Is that something Safari uses internally? Yes. Oh. Uh, that's where uh, yeah, information about the site is being stored. So it's storing your favorites and the history and stuff? Along with any scripts and, and uh, anything related to that page. Wow. And where does it go? Does it go to remote people on the internet? Uh, it's accessible hmm yeah so i could find out your your internet history you may be able to yes hmm. and it and it uh it still applies when you use the the private browsing yeah you can still do that through uh also origin resource sharing i've always wondered if that private browsing actually does any good yeah apparently it doesn't so they can find your google account anywhere of any visitor Mm -hmm. that's a pretty good example of something they shouldn't be able to get right so did safari patch it or anything uh they're still patching mm -hmm. the patch hasn't been released they just said they're working on on the bug yeah well that does sound pretty exciting all right and uh hey anyway, i i thought this was very interesting um they measured people's political party preference they asked them uh if you are Democrat or Republican, or if you're independent, if you lean Democrat or Republican. Mm -hmm. And they've shown that in 2021, there's been a huge shift by like 15 points. People used were like 10 points in favor of Republicans. Um, no, 10 points, Democrats were 10 points up at nine points up at the start of the year, and now they are five points under, which is what anybody can tell you. This year of Biden's presidency has been a disaster for the Democrats. An enormous number of people have turned against the Democrats. But that's one way to look at it. But I think a much more productive way to look at it, which is what Andrew Yang says, is that every, for the last 10 years, the number one party in America has been independent. Everybody is pretty much fed up with both the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, right now, 42% of people are independent. Only 29 and 27% are Democrat and Republican. And I think, you know, that's why I'm, I like the idea of a third party. And that's where Andrew Yang went, which I, I think he's right about that. I mean, this is garbage. I think what we found out is that Republicans are terrible and the Democrats are not much better. And we really would need another choice. <clears throat> that's what I think is the main message here. And, you know, people say it's very unjust. You know, why do people hate Biden even more than they hated Trump? He's not that bad. And I agree. He's better than Trump, but he's not what we were hoping for. He's still very far from what we need. All the Congress does is be paralyzed and not pass any of the bills we need. And they do a lot of fighting over garbage and they make a lot of promises and then they don't keep them. And I think most of us have just had with both of them doing all this garbage instead of running a good government. So anyway, <clears throat> and uh, there's a new thing I'd never heard of. <clears throat> NASA is sending a spacecraft to the asteroid Psyche. 
Um, and they are propelling it with electric propulsion, which I would not have believed. Instead of sending up a rocket engine, once they get it up into space with normal rockets, it's going to be powered by an electric propulsion. They bring along a tank of xenon and they turn the xenon into an ion with electricity and project it out the back. And that creates an incredibly weak force. They say it's the force equal to holding up three quarters in your hand, but that's enough to build up momentum in space and fly a long distance. And that's going to work. They're going to send up a tank with a modest amount of xenon. That's their fuel. They're going to power it with electricity they get from the sun and they can fly around that way, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to see that. Any chance of your sound, Alan? Strange. The icon appears, but I can't hear anything. Okay. I guess anyway. still in the way. Yeah, something, something's gone wrong with his OS again. Anyway, so let's go back to you, Irvin. You've got the Microsoft fixes. Yeah, Microsoft has released a fix for VPN connectivity and domain controllers restarting, along with uh, virtual machine start failures and ReFS formatted drives failing to mount. This update is hitting uh, 8.1, server 12, Windows 11, server 22, Windows 10, uh, Windows servers, and Windows 7, and server 2008. Does anybody use ReFS? Have you ever used it? You know, I tried to use it, and I was like, I don't get this. Yeah, well, it sounded like a good idea, but I don't know anybody that used it. Of course, before that, they had dynamic disk, and nobody used that either. Microsoft right. has so many uh, failed campaigns with technologies that don't work, but but they make a lot of money out of the ones that do work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. What's wrong with the VPNs? Uh, I think they keep disconnecting. I think that's the, the issue. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, I just thought my next article is from that same list. They have an RDP bug in this one which is pretty exciting. When Linux users use X windows, there was an old vulnerability where you would just let all the IP addresses connect to your X windows. And that just means anybody could see what you're doing on your desktop and send commands to your machine. It was a fairly common flaw. And RDP seems to have the same problem because of kind of a cute system. RDP has these things, um, Microsoft Windows has these things called named pipes, which are like listening TCP sockets, but they're using names instead of addresses. And so what happens is when you connect to an RDP server, it opens a named pipe with a certain name. And then when you connect, it connects you to the named pipe, but it doesn't keep track of which named pipe it opened for your connection. It just um, creates a new named pipe. And then when you connect, it connects you to the most recently created named pipe with that name. So it's got a race condition. So all you have to do is create an extra named pipe at the right time, and the user will connect to you instead of to the real server. Cool. So you can man in the middle everything. You can see their keyboards. You can see their screen. You can see their clipboard contents. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and they just patched that in the latest update. So that's a pretty serious RDP flaw. Cool. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, and uh, so this one I thought was interesting enough to make it entitled a podcast. And we were talking about it before we got started. I mean, a lot of us have about had it with COVID. And one thing that caught my attention is my sister, who's pretty much a medical expert, is having friends over her sing-alongs and saying, you know, it's about time to just forget about this nonsense and get back to life. And Bob Walker from UCSF here in San Francisco, who has been one of the main leading medical experts is now saying he's about hat. He's saying, you know, which is what I've been thinking too. The, the current Omicron peak is ridiculous. It's like be higher than it's ever been, but we expect it to go down in a few weeks. In two or three weeks, probably in San Francisco, we'll go back down. And then it's about time to just say to hell with it. <laughs> Let's go out back to normal life, normal classes, eating out with friends. You know, um, I, I might wear a mask if I'm going to a huge event like DEF CON, but it's time to resume some kind of normal life because it's never going to get much better than this. And we've had the vaccine. And I think most of us have probably also had COVID too. I think I've had COVID and the vaccine. And at some point you just have to say, you know, unless I'm going to hide my life house for the rest of my life, we just have to resume normal life. So um, even the medical experts are saying that. So I think uh, I'm hoping in a month or so we can get back to normal life. And next semester we can have in-person classes. Not that I have any say in it, but 
I think everybody's had it with this eternal lockdown forever. Um, we just need to live with it. Anyway, we'll see what happens to that. But a lot of people who you'd expect to be the most cautious are beginning to say, you know, we can't just keep up this lockdown stuff forever. Mm -hmm. And I know you've you've begun doing some social things, Irvin, which which I think is probably wise. You might as well. I mean, it's never going to get better. Although waiting a few weeks right now might be good because of Omicron being ridiculous. But you know, um, you do it, it, you did get the vaccine. Be a way of life, like with the flu. What's that? That's just going to be a way of life, like with the flu. Well, I think so. And, you know, hopefully, yep, at least we have the vaccines now. And now we even have therapeutics. So people get it, they can get treatment. So, you know, that's why they said, people said it would be wise to wait a few weeks because right now we don't really have the therapeutics. So if you got it and you went to the hospital, they don't really have enough of the right monoclonal antibodies or the, the Pfizer pill. But in a month or two, they'll have all that. And then it's just a treatable disease and acceptable risk. You know, it's all risk management, just like everything we do. Yeah. Anyway, I saw another article from The Guardian, which I thought was very interesting. There are these people, I've always heard of eidetic memory people who can remember every word they've ever read, but there are people who are super recognizers. Every face they see, they can recognize it later. See, people say when you watch TV, they notice how every extra in the background was an extra in this other show a year ago. And every time they meet somebody, they remember, oh, I passed you in the hallway like a year ago. And this woman talks about her life this way. And she was even called in to like consult with the police for some crimes and stuff. She just never forgets a face and never misassociates a face. So she knows where she's seen everybody before. And it's an interesting little, uh, another mental extreme I was not aware of but it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the neurology from years ago showed that you have special cells just to detect faces. We have evolved to be very good at that because it's really important to us to recognize, you know, your family and your enemies and stuff. And some people just have that ability to a higher degree. And I thought it's very interesting to find out what it's like and uh, how it was like to live with that kind of condition. Hmm. Anyway, that's it for this one. And we'll be back on Friday.